Okay. Um, and the C out, the information goes out to the screen. The C in, the information gets stored in the variable. Or you can say the user puts it in the computer. So now I'm going to put in my CN commands. So I'm going to click here. And I'm going to go to my star code. I get my CN. Right click, copy, come back to the calculator, and right click, paste. And same with after here. Well, let me. Ah, that bugs me. Okay. All right. So what what are you going to be declaring? What's the first number? That's going to be number one, right? So what's this one going to be? Number two. So now we look at calculated variable values. Given float 1 is equal to 5, and uh, the float result is equal to number 1 plus 2, the number 1 plus the integer 2, Okay, so we're going to calculate this example. So the result, this container for result, is going to contain this calculation, the number 1 plus 2, right? So whatever number it is, you add 2 to it. So if the, you have the float number here, 4, and you have float 2 number is equal to 5, and the float result is equal to numbers 1 plus 2, what's going to be the answer? Of course, 4 plus 5 is 9, right? So now we're going to calculate the result. Okay, result. Equals number one plus number two. Then what we have? Semicolon. You're right. Now run, save my work. Run the debugger. Okay, now ask for a number. Enter. Another number. And add it up. So what do I do if there's mistakes? I check my code against the example. Make sure I've got it all right. Make sure that I have semicolons at the end of my calculations. Make sure that um, I'm not missing any parentheses, like here in the main. Make sure that I don't that I don't have anything inside of those curly braces out on the other side of the curly brace out of the main function because it won't print, it won't work. So now we're in lab four. So now we're learning about the powerful if statement. Trust me, this is one of the most powerful statements in computing. You're really going to love what you can do with the if statement. It's going to make your, your programs really flexible and variable. Okay, we're going to let the, chooser, the user choose between addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now we're going to learn about the um, integer variable, variable int. Integers are whole numbers. There's no decimals involved. Well, why would you bother making a, a distinction between a float and an integer? Because um, making everything a float really slows down a program, so you want to make your 
uh, program lean and mean as, you, as much as you can. So if you're not going to be using fractions, why would you include them? That's why we, we're going to use uh, the integer variable. So now, to use the if statement, I need to declare me another variable. So I'm going to go back to my starter code text. And I'm going to copy this code in variable name equals some number. So I'm going to copy, come back to my calculator, and after the last float results, I'm going to add a new variable. I'm just going to paste it in there. Now what's this variable name? This variable name is going to be um, which calculation? And some number is going to be 1. Okay. Now we're going to look at the if function. Now you notice that there, instead of like the main function having an empty pair of parentheses, you have the condition inside the parentheses of your if function. Okay. So the, the, the condition here is um, the value of whatever which calculation is. See that which calculation this example? And this thing we're going to put which calculation and we're going to um, identify it with one. So then the, if the, that is true, whatever is inside the curly brackets of the if condition will be is going to be run. Okay? So we're going to do one will be add, two will be subtract, three will be multiply, four will be divide. But right now we're only interested in addition because we want to make sure our program runs, right? So we're just going to do one thing at a time. That's the secret to programming. You do a piece at a time, make sure it works before you add the second piece. <laughs> Don't be in a hurry like Miss Hadley. <laughs> so now I'm going to go grab me the next thing off the starter code text. Now notice... I want to include everything up to the last curly brace. Don't forget to copy that last curly brace. Right click copy. Come back to the calculator. Now where do I go? Where, do I, where am I going to put this? Okay, make sure that you're um, just above the line calculate the results. Let's go down. Where's calculate the results? Right here, right? So I'm going to put it right here. Paste it. All right, so now what am I going to do? I'm going to make sure that this control X, control V comes right after to calculate the results. Okay, make sure you move that last curly brace after the calculation so it's under, so it's all inside the if command. One big key in C programming is that you got to watch those curly brackets. <laughs> you got to make sure that they're where they're supposed to be. You got to make sure that for every opening one that there's a closing one. That's why when you first put them in there, always put an ending one. Even if you've got it misplaced, um, you'll always have the same number of curly brackets. But you got to make sure that they are around the things they're supposed to be. So one way we keep track of brackets is we'd use indentation, a little cheater secret. So this is how that works. See how the if command lines up here? Everything under the if command is just tabbed in a space. So you can see where you are. This is all about helping you. All right, indenting your code keeps it all straight for you. Just use the tab key. So now we'll just uh, we'll just clean up our code a little bit. We'll come on down, and we'll just tab. Well, what does the double equal sign means? It means to compare what's on the right with what's on the left. We make an if command, if is looking at which calculation is equal to 1. So you're comparing both sides, what's on the right with what's on the left. If this is true, then you run the statements underneath it. 
the single equal sign stores a value. The double equal sign just compares them. In the if statements, we're just going to check to see if it's addition, multiplication, division, or a subtraction, and we're just going to use 1, 2, 3, or 4 to indicate which one it's going to be. So now what do I do? I just changed this thing here. See? <laughs> we're going to call this which commit, which calculation. It's not going to run if you misspell it, Hadley. <laughs> so now I'm ready to debug this. First I click Save. Now I run my debugger. Okay. Number, number. And it's, it runs. Now what if it didn't run? What do you do? You um, make sure that your code looks like the example, right? Uh, make sure you've got a, your closing bat bracket in the right place. Remember your, um, pull it up. Your closing bracket comes after the calculation. If you forgot to drag it, make sure you dragged it. Okay. So now we're going to complete, um, we're going to do the following things to change our program so the user decides which calculation the computer does. So the first thing I got to do is I have to fix that um, integer variable I put in there. I take all that out, I click take out the equals one. See that? Delete it. So I go back to the starter code and I go look for count. Um, This will appear on the screen. Oh, up here. Here it is. Right click copy. Come back here. I'm going to come over here underneath my variables. And I'm going to uh, give my uh, comment, give instructions. That's always nice. <laughs> I'm going to put my count command here, my C out command. So this will appear on the screen. So I'm going to um, I'm going to put it to tell the user, choose a task. I'm going to just type it in here. Press 1 to add. To, to subtract, three to multiply, and four to divide. Okay, if it isn't red, it's dead. That means you have forgotten your quotation marks. Next, I'm going to go copy my C in code. Come back to my calculator. Come to the beginning of this next line and paste it in. And what are we going to call this? Which calculation, right? Be sure you're spelling this right. <laughs> Don't delete the semicolon. So when I'm done with that, I debug this again. Make sure I have no bugs. So I put in one this time because I don't have anything else except for one. So I put in my numbers and it works. 
Now if it didn't work, I just check my example with this example here. Okay? And um, make sure that you follow, follow the steps right. And now we begin the last lab. <laughs> so we're going to um, learn about the operators and we're going to use them in the code. So the, the user can choose the, what calculation they want to do. And your, your code will perform perfectly, just like you. So now we're going to get the paste, copy and paste this if statement a couple, a few more times. So we get the, we have it for the addition. Now we're going to do it from the subtraction, multiplication, and division. So I come over here. I'm going to start with my if. Here we go. Right click copy. You can make a couple spaces, then right click space, right click paste. And um, a couple spaces and right click paste. And I think it's one more time we need it. Right click paste. Okay, so we got addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we're set. Next thing we're going to do is use those smooth operators. Okay, you've used addition. So you guys know what subtraction is, right? Subtraction just that minus sign on your keyboard. Now, the star key is what we use for, op for the multiplication. You don't want to use the X. X is a letter. <laughs> use the star for multiplication and the slash for division. Okay, you're going to use these many times. So what does this mean? If you use integer number equals 2, so what is the result of the number 1 star 2? What's that? You got it. 2 times 2 is what? 4. There you go. You're so smart. <laughs> You always knew you were, though. Oh, if number one, if um, the first calculation is addition, that's one. The second calculation is what? Subtraction. So two is subtraction. So I, instead of the plus, I put in a minus. The third calculation is multiplication, right? So three is multiplication. And um, I put in the star in here. And lastly we have division is 4 and um, we use a slash. You know, I have this superfluous comment in here, I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to delete the rest of them. So now I'm going to finish cleaning these up. I'm going to make my indentations so they're easier for me to read. That's that if statement. That's that if statement. That's that if statement. Now I'll run the code and see if Miss Hadley has any bugs. Click bill, um, debug. And it worked. Okay, we're almost done here. Come down to the very end. And um, we're going to type the word system pause. Right before the end, right after print the results, right? So it's a function, right? But this takes an operator, so what do we put in here? Pause. If it's not red, it's what? <laughs> now what do I have at the end of my line? You're very correct. Semicolon. Now I'm going to de debug my program. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll do my three to four, three to four divide. Twenty-four by six. There you go. That's your program. Okay, once again, if it didn't work, make sure you check your code against the code in the program. Make sure that you have your your parentheses. Make sure pause is in all caps. Make sure that there's quotation marks around pause. Make sure you got a semicolon at the end. Okay, make sure that it's not outside this last closing bracket. Remember, if it's outside that last program, uh, closing back bracket, it won't run. All right. So now I'm going to go inside my calculator pro uh, program to run the executable file. So I double click calculator, go inside the debug. So all you do is you right click your exe file and you click um, 7-zip, add to calculator zip. That's the file you send to Miss Hadley. You're all done.